All right, so there's a solid amount of stuff to go over, even without a real football game. But just like the Pro Bowl, I'm not going to drag it out. So we'll go over that. We'll go over uh, people are buying the Orioles, and the Orioles are buying a bunch of Patriots front office news. What's up with Jay Harbaugh? Uh, in recapping my pick for the Super Bowl, unless it cost me $2.5 million to talk about it. Uh, Punxsutawney Phil did not see his shadow, so there will be an early spring. Let's go. Uh, it certainly feels like it will be with temps expect to get up to the uh, nearly 60 degrees here in Pennsylvania. That's crazy for the early early February. Um, but I also saw a shadow this week, and it was coming from an object about 9 to 10 inches long from a person whose name appropriately rhymes with a snake. That means Miss Spring is coming early. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Come on. Live from Delaware, it's Hoagies and Pierogies with your hosts, Ian DiCarlo. We're getting a little double down. Chocolate rain. And RJ Hammond. I just want some more hot tea in my life. Let's just say he was a good lover. Huge, huge piece of baseball news. The Orioles have sold their franchise. One of the worst owners, I can't remember his name, has sold the franchise to two, not one, but two billionaires. This is insanely great news for the Orioles. I mean, he sold high for sure. I I, I don't even know what the uh, – I think it was like $2.3 billion or something, maybe like $3.1 billion. I have no idea. I should have written down how much it sold for. But this will be a dynasty if they spend enough money to keep the core together. You know, Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rushman, uh, Grayson Rodriguez, and everyone else. It's insane. And what's their first thing they do? They fleece the Brewers. Let's fucking go. I love this. Personally, I love this. So uh, they traded for Cor- Corbin Burns. They sent Joey Ortiz, D.L. Hall, and a 2024 competitive balance round A pick, uh, draft pick for him. Make trading comp picks 100% normal for players. Please do this more often. You can't trade normal picks, but as small market teams, trading your competitive balance picks should become commonplace. There's, I mean, yeah, the Pirates have knocked it out of the park. That's where they like to spend most of their money is in that uh, is in that comp pick draft after the first round. Uh, s- certain small market teams get allotted more draft picks just because they're small market teams. So, and I mean, they're they're prospects. They're not guaranteed to hit at all. If you trade it for a guaranteed major league player, like Corbin Burns has been for the past, what, I don't know, four or five years? And maybe like three. He's been an ace for the past two or three. This is a great move for the future and a great sign of what's to come for the Orioles. If this was their first thing they do, holy shit. Uh, It's really a steal for the Orioles. They will be good for a very long time. And the Orioles social media, hats off to you. That picture of Omar walking down the street, but instead of his shotgun, he has a bat. <laughs> the head is the uh, the Orioles bird. That's That was a great picture. A little bit of NHL news here. We got Michael Buble high on mushrooms at the NHL All-Star Game. You said this was a microdose, so shit, I think my friend may have lied. Shrooms making me want to die. <laughs> I know that was terrible. I, I know it was absolutely awful. <laughs> I mean, were, were they all on mushrooms? That was one of the most boring all-star games I think I've ever seen from any sport. That was terrible. No one looked like they were trying to do anything. I mean, hell, who was it? Nikita, uh, what well, was it Kucherov? Nikita Kucherov? I, I, that might not be his name. I might be butchering that. He got booed for not trying at all. It was in Toronto, so those fans love their hockey. And if you're not taking it seriously, they will. you'll hear it. You will hear it forever. But yeah, that was the weirdest thing ever. The weirdest combination of stars on teams. And there were like three teams for some reason. I, I, honestly... 
I didn't watch too much of it. I just saw the highlights on Twitter. But it was Justin Bieber, some TikTok girl or something, and Michael Bublé as team captains. What the hell? What kind of mishmash kind of thing is that? I mean, they were obviously probably all Canadian, but it would, that, that was just weird. It was all, all super weird. You had to be on mushrooms to enjoy it. Oh, a little bit of college basketball news. We're getting closer to March Madness. I just got the text from uh, from Shane today. We're gearing up for the, the tournament. He's hosting the first two rounds at his house again this year. I know we got some good good footage out of that last year with RJ <laughs> passing out, falling asleep on the chair. That was hilarious. <laughs> good. Yeah. Matt. Yep. Zin. Look alive. <laughs> Look at the sharpie. Just fucked all of my parlays, every single one. D- just one. That's one. Well, why would you keep putting well, the yeah, same line in every single line? No, I had Duke minus five and a half, <laughs> and I had the over one. So I, I don't know how rowdy we'll get this year again, but oh, I'm I'm sure we're gonna turn up, especially if it's fucking warm, because last year it was snowing outside when we were there. But yeah, um, so this little piece of news: an Auburn player smacked Morgan Freeman's hand away from him. After Freeman held on to his jersey. Rightfully so. Hey, get the fuck off of me. But then after you notice that it's Morgan Freeman, he's going to be like, you are now smitten down by God. I wish I could do a Morgan Freeman way better than that. <laughs> but yeah, you don't do that to God himself. I love his movies. So that that's kind of like the, all the miscellaneous stuff that we had here. Um. Bunch of front office news, bunch of coaching changes here. So after I snuck in last week that the Seahawks found their guy in Mike McDonald, the next day the commanders hired Dan Quinn. I really do like the Seahawks hiring of Mike McDonald, but that just means that the Patriots really can't have anything nowadays. Youngest head coach now belongs to McDonald and not Mayo. By a couple months, or maybe almost a year, Fuck, we really can't have anything nice. Now, does Dan Quinn really deserve a head coaching job over the guy he lost 28-3 to in the Super Bowl? (laughs) That's really the only reason that this is head-scratching to me. I mean, he did a shit job in Atlanta and now is going into a bad situation in Washington. So, I really don't get it that much. Belichick, Carroll, and Vrabel are going into next season without jobs. Would Vrabel consider joining the Patriots as an assistant head coach to Mayo, maybe? That has been proven not true. But then I had also heard some rumors about that position already being taken by Steve Belichick. But he just accepted the defensive coordinator job at Washington. He goes to a good situation. Well, on defense. I heard this. At first I was like, oh my god. But then I looked into a little bit more. Uh, That article has come out about him damning Sam Darnold and having Josh Allen number one and right behind him I think it was uh who do you have number two it was someone else number two that's now a star quarterback in the league but Ben McAdoo has accepted an offensive assistant position with New England instead of an assistant coach uh assistant head coach like we all assumed he's someone that has a lot of experiences and is a great talent evaluator uh it was Lamar Jackson that he had number two in that 2018 class. So I, I am excited for it. I do think that the more help that they can get outside the organization, I keep hammering this every single week, get more help outside of the organization. But Ben McAdoo has also worked with Alex Van Pelt. Alex Van Pelt is the new offensive coordinator for the Patriots. They found their guy. Uh, He comes over from the Browns and this was, Pretty surprising. He wasn't really on anyone's radar. There were no rumors about him. So, yeah, they decided to announce him officially along with Demarcus Covington for D.C. and Jeremy Springer for uh, special teams coach. I'm pretty happy about it. The McAdoo news makes more sense after learning that he uh, that they worked together with the Packers in 2012 and 2013. So the more offensive leaning minds the better uh it makes way more sense to hire an offensive assistant head coach than a defensive one to pair with mayo like Vrabel would have been i do like the way that the browns offense has been able to uh adapt so easily to anyone behind center 
And if the Patriots really, I hope they don't, if they really want to let Mac have one last hurrah, this may as well be the place and the guy to try and make him look good. Um, I believe that he can make a, a rookie QB look fairly decent as well, whichever way the organization wants to go. If you don't get a quarterback at three and if you don't really get one, if you don't can't trade back up into the uh, first round to get a quarterback because you want that fifth-year option with a quarterback 100%. 1,000% you want that fifth-year option. There's no question. But who are they going to spend it on then? Do they really want to spend that on Michael Penix, J.J. McCarthy, or Bo Nix? I, I have no idea. I have no idea at all. And if the whole, the first two picks are up in the air right now. I really don't know what the Bears want to do. Don't know what the commanders do want to go QB. I think I know that, but I think everyone knows that. But who who knows? It could be flipped on his head in two seconds. I, I, I do think that this is a good choice for offensive coordinator. If you absolutely have to, sign Flacco to a one-year deal and let him wing it with AVP if Mac or a rookie QB are struggling. Fuck it. Get him off the couch and let him ride the Patriots into the playoffs. Two weeks ago, it was reported that Cliff Kingsbury would interview for the Bears OC position. We didn't really hear anything about that meeting. Earlier last week, the Raiders were expected to hire Kingsbury. And I wrote, this is huge for the Patriots because it is no longer guaranteed that Williams goes number one overall to the Bears. And I said, let the rampant speculation begin. Raiders will have to move up in order to get him, or they're going to let it ride with a free agent QB. Aiden O'Connell is not who they want long term. But he withdrew himself from consideration and is now the commander's OC. He joins Dan Quinn on that staff. Uh, commanders will go Williams if the Bears go MHJ, without a doubt. Leaving May to the Patriots, which would be awesome. So the, I guess the big big question is for everyone at the top of that draft there is do the Bears really want to move on from Justin Fields? I have no idea. I would not be happy if the Patriots took Daniels at number three. That's way too high for such a risk. Looks like a baby deer that ran out into the middle of traffic, and when he gets hit, it's like he gets hit by an 18-wheeler. It looks bad. It, it, it really does look bad. Now, if they were drafting, say, like 10th or so, if they were the ones to trade back with like the Raiders at, I think, eight or seven, something like that, then I would be more comfortable taking Daniels maybe outside the top 10 because Fields was, what, 10th as well? I think Fields was the 10th pick. I just really am not sold on Daniels is the bottom line. Uh, more on the commanders, they are letting go of Eric Bieniemy. So what the fuck is up with that? News just came out that they helped he helped the Chiefs with installing a play like before the AFC Championship game or something. He's probably going to sign back with the Chiefs, honestly. Someone we all thought was in line for several years to be a head coach gets let go by the first place that hired him in a place that is extremely desperate. You have to wonder if those reports of him being a wild dickhead demanding perfection and not taking Anything else like during practice and just screaming at people were true uh, or something along those lines of him being a hard ass. Uh, maybe he just rubs players the wrong way. I don't know, uh, but I'm sure he'll be with someone soon. Like I said, maybe the Steelers, you know how Brian Flores was ousted and they brought him in and now Eric B enemies being ousted. They should bring it. They should try it. They should definitely try it. So news first news on the schedule. Uh, this week, all of the international games have been released and when they're going to play them. There are five international games. First one to open up week one, Sao Paulo. The Eagles are playing in Sao Paulo. And I said, bring Sao Paulo Antonio there. <laughs> Sao Paulo Antonio to Sao Paulo. Make it happen. First ever Brazil game. Let's hope that no one dies in the crowd like at a Taylor Swift concert. Uh, th this is actually pretty awesome. But I thought... There was a broadcasting rule in place because the game's going to be on a Friday night. So I, mean, I thought that they couldn't play during high school games. And this is obvious. Like NFL starts like week three of high school football. So I don't know how this is going to work. Maybe since they're out of the country, they can get around that. But I thought that's why the Black Friday game was played at three o'clock. I, I have no idea. So, yeah, let's let's get into this. 
I saw this picture of Jay Harbaugh. And it just made me laugh uncontrollably. I thought of one joke and it made me just continue going on. And here we have the roast of Jay Harbaugh. Everyone meet Jay Garbage. <laughs> Jay Harbaugh looks like J.J. Watt's football career never took off. He has one career sack and he was born with it. He's not nearly as famous as J.J. Watt. Not even close. Not, not even one little bit. There is one thing, though. Jay doesn't have CTE. Cash till eternity. <laughs> J.J. Watt is making bank off those commercials. Jay? Eh. Jay coached with his dad, Jim Harbaugh, at the University of Michigan. While there, Jim was accused of stealing signs and then left for the Chargers. Jay allegedly didn't know about it. This is the second time that Jay wishes he saw the signs before his dad left him. <laughs> After Jim decided to leave for San Diego, Jay decided to uh, chase after him. But the Seahawks actually wanted to give him more money. But Jay decided he would never charge her to Seahawk. <laughs> or him. Or anyone for that matter. You just have to ask him to see him in his show. Okay, let's get into these Pro Bowl antics, huh? They had to censor everything. That for on Thursday, they had to censor the N-word so many times. <laughs> oh, oh, that was so bad. I mean, if you're going to censor shit, like, don't even censor it. Just pay the fines. Just give an upfront amount of cash and just say, hey, let's just let us cuss as much as we want. Because they weren't even getting it. They were not even bleeping out the cuss words. They were just letting them go and then bleeping out whatever came next. So it was just like, fuck. Shit. Yep. So these games, I, I do really like these games. Um, they're perfecting them. I think this is the second year that they've done this, maybe the third year. But this year they have definitely, definitely perfected it a little bit more than last time. It could always be better, but they did pretty well this year. Uh, precision passing was first up. Two is shit the bed, and Hertz didn't do so hot either. <laughs> Uh, who was Dan Orlovsky actually scored more than everyone afterwards. It was mainly because he hit the 10 at the end and he got 27 total points. The high score, I think, was 26. But C.J. Stroud was also talking shit to Baker Mayfield. It's a young man's league. <laughs> that was great, but Baker won it. Uh, he got some points for the NFC. Uh, next up was the, the best catch was introduced now. And dude, I, I hate this edited stuff. These catches were dog shit, first off. And Joku didn't even make his catch. And Puka just kind of had to stand up on a wakeboard. I mean, why give them three attempts if it's just an edited segment? Who the fuck cares? Puka won by default, obviously. They revealed it on Sunday, which I didn't know, and I thought I just missed it. The one that I did miss, though, was the punt game, kick tac toe I was kind of pissed about that because that's usually a pretty good, that's a pretty good one. I think I saw the clip. There's a clip online somewhere and I'm going to have to look it up, but it's too late now. Fuck it. I just watched the rest of it this morning and I, <laughs> I'm done with the Pro Bowl until next year. But after best catch was introduced, uh, they had the jugs machine. This is always hilarious. And they didn't really have any big guys doing it. The biggest guy they had doing it was, uh, I think Patrick Queen did it. A linebacker. That's it. I was like, oh, man, you're not going to make an offensive lineman do it? Come on. They made this a lot more entertaining this year. Everyone took turns. I, I don't. They may have did that last year, but it was much more smooth this year. Dan Orlovsky accidentally called Rashid Shahid and <laughs> Jameer Gibbs. And RG3 made the do they all look alike joke. <laughs> that was great. Uh, Bland had more pick sixes than catches from the jugs machine this year. I only got the four on the jugs machine. He had six pick sixes. And then Killebrew actually from the Steelers special team or won it with six balls got. Next up was closest to the pin. This year's competition was much better than last year's long drive. Oh, there, last year it was pitiful. At least multiple people. I think three people at least got close to the pin. And Brian Anger, of course, the punter. Gets the closest. <laughs> he pinpointed that thing two feet away. Damn. Uh, next to last one uh, was Snapshot on, on Thursday. 
Kelsey would not give up on that five. He kept going for it <laughs> over and over. He only got one of them, and I really thought that he was going to win because no one had any idea where the ball was going at all. That was bad. <laughs> that was that was really bad. I mean, it really makes you think like, damn, the center for Alabama who kept fucking up the snap to Jalen Milrow in the game against Michigan really doesn't have any idea where it's going. That's not good. <laughs> Only one person made more than two. It was DePaulo, who was actually aiming and not just hoping that a ball went in the goal. He was aiming for the one, which was the biggest, biggest target. All right, last game of Thursday. This was really short, so nothing really happened. They need to get better camera angles. This is like watching Guts. <laughs> and I know that because I'm actually watching the Playing Watching Gut series on John Boy's channel on YouTube. It's hilarious. Uh, they, I guess they recently changed the format. I just found this, so I don't know what the format was before. But it's six episodes, and they draft kids at the start of each episode and then score based on the final result, like one for third place, two for second place, three for first place. So they're two-thirds of the way through the season, and... And it is hilarious. It is so funny watching them eat these gummies <laughs> and then just comment on, first off, Mike O'Malley, who's on Coke. <laughs> and then these kids some have the worst answers ever. I mean, they're, you know, 11 through 13 or 14. <laughs> but it's always like, how'd you think you did on that one? Good. Did Was that hard for you? Not really. <laughs> Back to you, Mo. <laughs> Underwhelming, for sure. Nothing really happened during dodgeball. Uh, so Sunday, 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 Sunday. I do like the 50-yard field. Reminds me a lot of arena football. And I do really like the scoring. Reminds me a lot of arena football. <laughs> as long as Tyreek doesn't get injured, he will be a menace in the Olympics for flag football. They're going to win gold 100%. Him, C.D. Lamb, and Keenan Allen, if he can keep, keep it up too, did pretty damn well. I love the no fumbles rule on laterals. Whenever they lateraled it, if it hit the ground, counted as a fumble, just dead play. Play stopped. They maintained possession of the ball. That, that made the scoring go kind of crazy at one point. I do like how they had the events in between the quarters of the game. And these games are worth three points. So if they ever get rid of field goals, they should do these games instead. Uh, if Belichick were GM in that case, he'd be drafting players in the first round just to win these games. <laughs> these three points are extremely important. I like to think there would be a giant wheel they spin with all the different games and whatever it lands on is what they, what they go for. That would be awesome. <laughs> it was, uh, oh, I didn't write down who said this, but he said, God has just had his, oh, it was, it was one of the coaches, one of the coaches that was nominated for high school coach of the year said, God has just had his hand all over us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought that was so funny. <laughs> and that ball from Stroud to Chase was beautiful. Yeah, it's flag football. But to fucking do the whole spin, stay there, spin around, hit him. Uh, not across your body, but off your back foot like that. Oh, that was a great throw and catch by CJ Stroud and Jamar Chase. And another great throw was Keenan Allen throwing that dart all the way across the field to Evan Ingram <laughs> and it was supposed to go to Stroud but Ingram was there no one guarded him that was that was great they actually tried to give Keenan Allen another attempt at a touchdown pass but that one didn't go it was 47 to 36 AFC at halftime and oh boy things went bad for the AFC they had a whole bunch of mini games the gridiron gauntlet was first up and this one was fucking awesome Miles Garrett did nothing to help move this sled, but Jason Kelsey made it really easy for him. And I love this event. I think I said last year that it should be a little bit longer and they should do it more than once. Because I think they, I'm pretty sure they just ran through it once really quick last year. 
but they did it twice and it was definitely longer it was like the whole across the whole field i loved that that was a great relay race so i just realized at this point that i missed kick-tac-toe like i said earlier it didn't get recorded and i'm not <laughs> and i was not absolutely not watching the pro bowls with com- pro bowl with commercials are you fucking crazy are you kidding me <laughs> The last minigame was tug of war and the NFC dominated. This one was actually halftime, but we'll just go over it now. I mean, it was best two out of three and then for each round. And then there were best two out of three rounds. All four times crushed it. Absolutely crushed it. Like didn't even (laughs) Aiden Hutchinson went off he pulled the whole team by himself and Dexter Lawrence was at the end of his line so I mean how are you going to beat Aiden Hutchinson and Dexter Lawrence together on a tug of war team absurd but that like I said that one was after halftime but the NFC swept all of the halftime games and made up the deficit to go up 48 47 going into the second half that was huge for him and it started to drag a little bit. I mean, the final score was 64-59 NFC. We don't need to be having referee controversies or controversial calls or it, it, just a waste of time. Quit dragging it out. Fuck it. Get rid of it. The NFC won, like I said, on the back of sweeping those games in between the quarters. And that was it was really fun. I mean, other than the game itself lasting a little bit too long, I did enjoy it. It gets me a little bit hype, more hype for flag football in four years. I, I I do love it. Oh, Eli doing the psych meme was great. I have to look this up. I'm Eli Manning. I'm nice. Tom Brady's the GOAT. Psych! I beat him twice! Oh! That was so good. That was so good. <laughs> Oh, a super hot fire. Let's go. <laughs> that was golden. Uh, like I said, I'd recap I'd recap my pick for the Super Bowl. I am going with the 49ers. After thinking about it for another week, I think the 49ers are a solid choice. I think the offense has just been more functional than the Chiefs has been. And while the defense for the 49ers has let up some points, the Chiefs still need to prove that they can put up those points. They're still a pretty low-scoring team. And 17 points against the Ravens in the AFC Championship game. I don't think 17 points is going to cut it against the 49ers. So, still going with 49ers. And please, for the love of God, please tell me why a suite at the Super Bowl is $2.5 million. Christian McCaffrey and Olivia Culpo can't afford a suite for their family. When a superstar of the league who is playing in the Super Bowl can't afford the best seats in in the house for his family, things need to fucking change. Max $100,000 for tickets. There needs to be a cap on these ticket prices. That's absolutely absurd. That made me want to rip my fucking face, face off. $2.5 $2.5 million. It's dystopian at this point. That's wild. Yeah, $100,000 is still too much, but my God. $2.5 million for a suite at the Super Bowl when I can watch it at home for free? Oh, Jesus. I would personally never pay over $1,000 for a ticket. I'm pretty sure that already prices me out of a normal seat at the Super Bowl. So... I don't know. We'll see. If I get rich, fuck it. Then then I'd go to a Super Bowl. That's definitely on the bucket list. All right. Pat Mahomes Sr. got his third DUI in Texas, which with a conviction is two to ten years in prison. What if in the future Mahomes has a bad injury and can't muster the confidence to play again? Brittany left him for Travis after she weaseled her way in between him and Taylor Swift. He's stuck in a rut. 
But his dad comes out of jail at just the right time to teach him how to be an NFL quarterback again. He finds a stride and takes the Chiefs to the Super Bowl for the final time in his career. It comes down to the last drive where Mahomes has to outrace the defender to the goal line. Mahomes dies with no time left as he's being tackled. He made it. Then they take off their helmets and start passionately kissing. If you ain't first, you're last. (laughs) Then Brittany tries to get back with Mahomes, but Taylor Swift walks in and says, Now we got bad blood, Brittany. Mahomes is my man. Then they have singing, football playing, Kermit voiced babies. The end. Kansas City Knights. The Ballad of Playoff Patty. Golden. As they walk off into the sunset. (laughs) Obviously just based off of Talladega Nights. All right. Yeah, I think that's it for this week. Uh, Last thing I do want to say. The Terry Bradshaw episode of Games with Names where they go over the Immaculate Reception game was awesome. Uh, I have a huge huge appreciation now for how things used to work compared to today. Terry Bradshaw would call all his plays. They were basically winging it out there and they would collaborate with each other. Like, is this good? Is this good? You know, what do you think will work here? Okay. We'll go with that then. It was awesome. It was really awesome to hear old stories about how football was in the seventies. So go ahead watch that. Like I said, go out there, watch the uh, Playing Watching Guts series on John Boy's YouTube. And uh, Season 2 of Call of Duty came out today, so I'm going to go play that until I pass out. I thought it came out yesterday, and I was pretty sad because I was geared up to just do what I just said I was going to do yesterday. So, all right, everybody. Make sure to support the show by leaving a like and comment on our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe as well. Make sure you follow us on TikTok and uh, Instagram for clips. And then obviously we're on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And yeah, I believe that's it. Thank you very much for listening. We'll leave you with this. Oh, much, 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 much.